Good morning and welcome to IoT Live. First, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Eurotech, Cisco, ThingWorks, Zatar, Glassbeam, and Pacific Controls. Next, I'd like to thank Postscapes and Harbor for putting this on. This morning, we're going to start with a couple of keynotes. We have the CEO from Eurotech, Larry Wall. We also have the CEO from Pacific Controls, Dilip Rahulan. And then after that, we'll jump into a couple of panels, and I'll be coming back to you at the lunch hour to kind of give you an update as to where we're heading for the rest of the day. But our, our panel discussions are going to be talking about platforms, the emergence of development tools, and then we'll be looking at manufacturing and industrial sectors. And lastly, and, and probably one of the most heated and unsolved debated topics is we have some great experts coming into our panels to talk about security and how it should really be addressed. We'll be closing out the day with a, a keynote from Cisco. And lastly, we'll be closing out um, finally with a demo session from four players that I'll talk to you a little bit later about. But at this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass over to the Eurotech CEO, Larry Wall. And thank you very much, Larry, uh, for joining us today. And we'll go ahead and let him uh, jump into his presentation. All right. So thank you, everyone, and welcome. Uh, and again, thank you to Harbor and, um, and that team for, uh, one, putting this event together on a, on a topic that's near and dear to all of our hearts, uh, everybody that's uh, participating here today and, and hopefully uh, joining us. Um, I guess, and we're a little sorry for the, uh, you know, a little bit of a late start, but as we, as we know, being first isn't always easy, but uh, what we'll talk about today about, about IoT is uh, that we're not first, and none of the things that we're doing here, either as our firms and the firms, uh, you know, that are also going to present today, um, you know, aren't first, and we're at a place where uh, we can start to make a lot of things happen. So, uh, the... Um, I'm going to go through a few things today. One of the things that I'm not going to do as we start to start to look to navigate where we're at in, in IoT and really, uh, you know, our view on it is I'm not going to talk about 50 billion devices. I'm going to try really not to talk about big data. I'm not going to try to overuse this catch-all thing called analytics. I'm not going to debate the difference between M2M and IoT. Let's pre even though they're not, maybe let's pretend like some of those are answered questions. And I'm going to try to find a few things uh, that are interesting, maybe fun, maybe even a little provocative um, on things that aren't answered, at least from our point of view, and, and maybe the ways that uh, you know, we're trying to address them. All right, so just indulge a, a few slides to do a little bit of framing you know, as we start this day today. And, and like Alex said, there, there will be many deep dive sessions today from a lot of experts, uh, many firms that we work with. Uh, regularly that will drill into some of these. But the Internet of Things, as we know, really in one, in one sense is, um, is not new. And, you know, some of the things we'll look at here through, through the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes, uh, you know, or what, what is similar to regular and normal and typical IT uh, kinds of projects and what is unique about IoT. You know, we know we've been doing SCADA systems and network management systems and smart embedded systems for many years that really uh, have already created this network of intelligent or semi-intelligent or at least electrified and connected endpoints. Uh, and so even though I said I won't talk about uh, some of the numbers that we all love to throw around about 50 billion endpoints, what we do know is, is that there is no question that this thing we, we call as, a, as, a, as an industry, IoT is large. Uh, you know, and it's very large, no matter what, what perspective you try to look at the numbers. Um, but the thing about it being large is that it, 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 it is like a light that attracts the moths, is that it, it, um, it uh, draws attention and innovation and investment. And so this slide, when we look at uh, some, some recent data from BI about where is innovation and really where is investment coming from? Uh, in one sense, we look at some of the top uh, industries where this is occurring, and it's not really all that much of a surprise. We look at manufacturing and transportation, a little bit of uh, some of the healthcare and retail. You know, we probably aren't that surprised that there's a lot of investment happening in those markets. Those markets have traditionally been 
early adopters of other technology like telematic solutions, like other IT solutions, because the business cases uh, for many of those use cases really are so compelling on their own and really stand alone as you as firms look to invest and change operating characteristics and become uh, you know more efficient and, and even look at ways to generate new business opportunities. But the thing that 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 really one of the unanswered questions I say you know think of that comes from this data is really are all those uh, in terms of an investment mix are all of these created equal? And this is the part where I think it's not so much is is early adopter some of these uh, markets. Uh, while there's plenty of innovation to happen in all of them, some of these start to see, you know, I won't say commoditization, but at least standardization uh, around more shrink-wrapped applications a little sooner than others. So some of this spend, you know, that we see uh, in some of the um, in some of the markets, you know, it's the mix of where where pure innovation is coming from is a little bit different. So you know, depending on what market you're in, you know, that uh, the so what to you is, you know, as you get a sense for um, you know, what, what pieces and parts you're going to acquire to build a solution to allow you to have intelligent connected devices, you, know, you might see vastly different uh, types of suppliers and maturity uh, available in your market. So the data buzz, and you know, maybe just one last slide here as I transition into some other things, is with all of that innovation, of course, comes a lot of data. There's a debate that goes on about how much data and intelligence exists where in a distributed system, how much intelligence at the edge, how much data is, is actually sent to a cloud for whether it's real-time, near-time, or, or post-processing analytics. But either way, uh, there's a lot of data. Much of the data today, we know what it is. We know how we're going to use it. We have business cases built on that data. Uh, data that tells us where things are, how fast things are moving, the state and condition of assets, things like that. But here's, here's one of the things I think is, is unanswered and perhaps one of the most interesting things is, is with all of that data, some of the, some of the business cases are very, uh, are very pure in a sense. If I could get this, you know, if I could get more granular information, more timely, I could be more efficient on the way I route my service vehicles, or I, if I knew the condition of a piece of uh, commercial air conditioning equipment, I could not roll a truck, or I could, or I could do a repair before a failure. These kind of things, um, the use of the data and what data I would collect and what I would do with it is is pretty obvious. Other data also kind of obvious. I know if I'm going to use it in my ERP or some other kinds of system uh, systems. Much of the other data we talk about in this bucket that we do call analytics, and we look at it and say, we're going to have so much data that some of which we have to process as an event to take some action, but lots of other data, we're going to go look at it, we're going to do trend analysis. But here's the thing. Some of that data has a new purpose and will have a new purpose. Systems of record that uh, we don't even know of yet. And so the investment, we, you know, the evidence of that, you know, is clear in in funding uh, in the market, hundred or, or one one point uh, seven billion dollars last year out of the VC community just for IoT-based uh, innovative, primarily software applications. Okay, so what this is is this to me is the evidence of the innovation that's occurring around what to do with the data. You know, and again, some of the folks that you'll hear from today are going to talk about things they do with it already. You're going to see some of that innovation already. Uh, already happening. With all of this data, we we sort of ask ourselves, you know, where are we in the ecosystem? You know, where are we? Not just we as a provider, but we as uh, we as individuals. Just because of the uh, the nature of um, you know the data and the different applications that are going to exist. So, <clears throat> one of the things related to this investment, and we've seen this with with firms that we talk to, startups that come to us, uh, people we talk to in the investment community, that this innovation that is occurring, especially around the data, is creating something else. And this is, you know, this is one of the, you know, I think interesting things about this market we're in is the idea that a business model 
business models will be created not just from an individual and discrete use case, but from hybrid uh, uh, use cases where you may not be an actual user of your data, but the concept of service bureaus, you know, like we've seen, you know, like in the information brokers, like we see with some companies entering, say, the usage-based insurance industry where, where firms like insurance companies, do they really want to be in the telematics and data collection business? Of, of course they don't, but uh, they want access to the data. So what, you know, as providers, you know, who the actual user and the consumer of the data is really gets separated sometimes, you know, by, uh, by who's going to use it, provide it, and make value of it and monetize it. Okay, so if we talk about technology a bit, just to take a really fast step, uh, we know this. We know that we've been on this transformation over the last years of of legacy architectures, early generating, uh, early generation computing, one to one data relationships, really uh, pre PC. You know, we don't care about this, but really today we're way past this. But it's interesting as we think about. Uh, where we are with these type of uh, highly distributed IoT systems. Uh, we know the PC generation uh, came into force. It allowed a many-to-many uh, -many relationship. We had innovation at the edge. The PC allowed, similarly to the way we think of intelligent IoT edge, edge uh, equipment, um, it started to enable those things. It allowed us to uh, innovate around security, um, a balance of where processing occurred in the network, and many other things uh, along that. So now, now we get to where we are really today with what we think of as a service-oriented architecture. And you know, this is there's many corollaries to this uh, when we when we break down these barriers and we have we have a service bus kind of uh, of architecture, and in fact, you know, we even sometimes now start to think of the internet as the operating system, where independent of what really what hardware and what actual OS, you know, as long as services appear as a web service or you know a RESTful interface in whatever form it takes, right? We can we can match together new kinds of applications, you know, where where those things are made available to us. But there are and there are many common attributes. You know, as we think about, we start to look at an IoT stack here in a second between, you know, what we see in the service-oriented architecture and what we, uh, and even some corollaries to mobile development and mobile applications, really, really just in the last four or five or six years and then really accelerated by, by the app stores, uh, you know, early mobile applications, which in a sense have, a, you know, are very similar to what we think of as machine to machine and IoT, except uh, they have a human on the end of them, but many of the same problems. How do I use the network? How do I secure it? How much horsepower actually exists uh, in the device? You know, which we now know we have smartphones that uh, you know are incredibly powerful. But this corollary exists now uh, to where we are in IoT. So if we think about IoT, uh, you know, relative to service architectures and distributed systems, uh, we can apply those. Uh, we can apply those same, really those same concepts. Uh, we know that an IoT uh, solution is comprised of sensors uh, and devices at the edge. There's always some type of uh, firmware or application that sits, you know, near or at the edge to do collection and communication. There's always some kind of infrastructure that is, you know, sometimes very simple and dumb, other times very uh, intelligent in terms of what kind of networks are being used and different options like that. And then, of course, there's, you know, what the heck we do with the data uh, in, in terms of what business application. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, that I think about a lot is there is, a, and as I said earlier, there is so much innovation at the data layer and the application layer, layer, and it's necessary and it's fantastic uh, that it occurs because it's what really will let investment occur and enterprises get value and, and municipalities get value and whoever the users are, uh, but without uh, reliable and predictable and economical delivery of the data, really those applications are uh, you know, really an empty bucket waiting for something to operate on. So what happens then is, 
we have to be careful that and say, well, it's IoT. Uh, it's just it's just an IT system. You know what's so different? What what is it that we don't know? We we've done this before, right? We just this is just yet another IT project. We're going to um, you know put our project plan together uh, and build that. But there are some things that are very different with uh, with deploying with designing, deploying, and operating an IoT system really from a traditional IT system, and much of it really has to do with how much unmanned intelligence. Is pushed, you know, out into into the, to the edge, and and what happens is it's kind of easy to imagine one endpoint or ten endpoints or a hundred endpoints, but uh, really the complexity starts with, uh, you know, the applications and the use cases we see are where those endpoints, you know, go to the thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands, right? And all of a sudden, then really the problem changes in terms of the manageability and really good design practices. So with IoT, here's what I like to think, and in fact, I like to I like to tell my kids to respect their parents and their peers, and in technology, I like to say uh, let's respect our tiers or the layers of the stack. You know, a bit like we talked, this really takes the you know the prior chart and, and starts to turn this thing like a vertical stack. Is is we have field infrastructure, uh, communication infrastructure, system infrastructure like servers and cloud computing application infrastructure that makes data ready within a hosted or cloud environment and really then the application layer. So within each of these, the, the field infrastructure layer is where is where a lot of the physical edge equipment is. So of course the devices uh, in terms of the sensors, gateways, whether they are small, medium, and large, uh, whether they're large aggregation gateways that are connecting to other sensors via Wi-Fi and, and, and serving again as a router and an aggregation point, or whether these are uh, start to look like micro gateways with a one-to-one -one relationship of a, of a wireless connectivity and a sensor. Uh, the field infrastructure, of course, includes the, uh, the operating environment that's running on, a, on, not essentially, but running on a compute device that is fully featured. Right in the field, unmanned, unattended, black box, lights out. So you know the operating system choices and security, how you manage it, is perhaps one of the biggest one of the biggest challenges and, and questions that we all, as an industry, answer. There are many you know many ways we think about remote management and uh, and image management and really life cycle of a device. You know, and there are, and there are good ways to do that today at the communication layer. Uh, we have many choices. We have uh, we have all kinds of wireless and near field connectivity, and of course, uh, lots of cellular option these days. I mean, one of the best innovations, really, in the last you know four or five or six years or or, or so, is the is the willingness for the wireless carriers, really globally and in North America, to come up with um, with data plans that really allow the adoption of Bursty small amounts of data, as opposed to you know some of the early data plans where you, you had to try to calculate uh, you know which plan you would be in and what happens if you go over. But the but the whole sim management uh, set of platforms from uh, both the carriers themselves and really the part of the market where the MVNOs exist, with folks uh, very much specializing in in uh, connected devices, is really a valuable addition. Uh, to our marketplace, it really enables us, and I know as enterprises, you know, it allows enterprises, uh, you know, to much more easily determine a, a wireless strategy, you know, both both uh, in North America and even globally. Protocols are of course important. We're going to hear some things later today about the choice of protocols. You know, we within our uh, product line and our software stack, we really rely primarily on MQTT, but uh, you know, we use other variants and um, and other protocols really uh, when it's needed. So system infrastructure, this is what we think of as as the cloud uh, in the computing, really, you know, the as a service, uh, whether it's infrastructure, compute, or platform as a service. This is really the infrastructure to let us run uh, server side parts of the software platform. And then really, as we get to this application layer, this is the last step to make this data 
usable by some application. Now, again, you'll hear through today and all the research you, you might do as you think about how to architect your solution, there are many ways this data is made available. You know, we look at it as a, you know, as a topic-based uh, kind of, uh, of, of design um, that puts data, that makes data available, whether it's an application or a relational database uh, northbound. But really, we don't uh, we don't try to presuppose or pre-guess, you know, what the full relationships of the data are in the way that we architect uh, our ability to pull data from sensors and allow you know intelligence to exist uh, at the edge in applications. Okay, so then if we respect those tiers and we recognize they exist and that they're each important, then the question is how how should they be assembled and you know, should I, should I go piecemeal this stuff together myself as an enterprise or an integrator, or should I look for a fully integrated platform? Well, and that's one of these questions where, well, it does depend a little bit like a lot of things in, in our technology world. It depends on what we're trying to do, you know, in our time frame and our budget and our risk tolerance. But we, as, as well as others, really have taken the, the basis of these, of these tiers, well-designed tiers, uh, tiers that actually can be portable with uh, and be and be uh, decomposed and used uh, individually sometimes but actually assembled those for to allow very fast time to market and really uh, create an infrastructure that allows an enterprise to uh, use open systems not feel uh, locked in necessarily to a, a single monolithic way of uh, of bringing data out of the field up into an application. Okay, now, um, you know, the other part of this tier, like we said, is, you know, we as, uh, as a set of providers, you know, that are on this and, and, the, and the experts that we'll talk today, you know, we're going to talk about things at all of these tiers, but the piece that uh, is, in one sense, it's the sexy piece because it's what we see and feel and touch as either even consumers sometimes, but as enterprise users, really are all the things that exist at the application layer. So uh, this is an area when you, if you would ask, boy, what are the new applications? We, we, we could list some, and there are, in terms of this, where data is being used differently and where we have hybrid, hybrid business models connecting. But this is a place where there will be massive innovation, and it will come from, it will come from startups, it will come from uh, large integrators, it will come from uh, existing large ISVs, uh, you know, that we all know and work with. But where else will it come from? You know, it will come from the enterprise or the or the municipality or the city or the or or, or the government entity. And and it seems obvious. That the but the but the deployment of an IoT system, you know, and what we call IoT you know, as this global umbrella, will be as disruptive uh, as, as maybe dot-com was to brick and mortar. It will be as disruptive as, um, as mobile applications have been to enterprises taking their business online through, through the mobile channels. And I don't mean just disruptive economically or, or to the business model or the competitive environment. It will be disruptive culturally within a company. So it's the, it's the one thing about, you know, I don't know if it's truly an unanswered question, but, but the question as an enterprise you have to answer is, you know, if I, if I can imagine a system that collects and automates and does these things, how will that change what happens the next day when my organization shows up? And my, in, whether it's sellers in the field or or service people in the field, or you know, or municipal workers, how it might affect my relationships with a union, and those kind of things. So, so the um, so the recognition that you you have to be ready as an enterprise is as important with IoT as it's been for a couple of those other you know major technology uh, cycles. Because you know what we see in our customer base. Uh, is exactly that is is our organizations that you know wake up and say holy cow 
I need, I need different skills, I need different quantities, I need them in different places, I need them doing different things. And mostly, that's part of a plan and that's a good thing uh, because there's benefit from that, but it is uh, but it is definitely impactful. Okay? So, if you do that and you, and you respect your tiers, is that, is that enough? Is it enough? Uh, and the answer, of course, is no. That's looking at uh, the world from a very simplistic, you know, really, uh, let's break apart our technology stacks, and we all draw pictures about our technology stacks. But really, uh, for any system, uh, large-scale technology system that's going to be put into service, you know, we have to think about all of the abilities, the reliability and, and scalability and securability and portability. Um, these things, really, to us, are what separate the, um, you know, the application of technology to maybe a, a little bit of a, of a skunk works or a proof of concept or feasibility study into the pieces and, and the building blocks that allow you to build something that can actually mature into a usable enterprise system. Okay, so, you know, for example, portability. One thing that we know is, is we're in an industry that is uh, faster than Moore's Law right now. It is the, the innovation uh, at every layer is occurring at a pace where it is, it is guaranteed that what sensor, what, uh, you know, what edge equipment that you select today you will have other options and maybe need to take other options as you both add uh, capabilities or look for different price points or form factors uh, in the near future. So, you know, the idea of an environment that allows you to build applications, not just at the, on the server side of the world, but the embedded applications that, that have some portability to them, right, is very, fa is very powerful. Extensibility also. So it's easy for us to talk about uh, cloud computing, which is a very a wonderful uh, innovation for us in many ways, and it, it provides us economic and extensible uh, computing. But when we think about what, what does extensibility mean at the edge, you know, in terms of manageability, uh, performance, and, and monitoring, it's a, it's a big difference. Um, and stability and maintainability. The, the, the thing about maintainability is, is that with, with intelligent edge compute uh, platforms, we think of them as, as not just one application residing you know, in this intelligent endpoint, really but a set of microservices or micro applications that just like you uh, turn your smartphone on and it connects, and uh, you get the up late, uh, you know, the application updates from the app stores. That concept uh, has to exist. You will, you will, you will find, of course, uh, classic, uh, you know, bugs you may want to fix. You're going to want to enhance. You're going to want to tune. You're going to add applications. So this maintainability and remote maintainability uh, in a way that allows you to uh, uh, not be disruptive. Uh, to a system is very important. So as we go from being a hillbilly to maybe something uh, a little more mature and a little more white tablecloth-y, I don't know how far you want to go, but uh, here's a question that, that we have is, does embedded matter? And you know, we're, we as Eurotech are, uh, historically have been an embedded company in the, in the, in the industrial, uh, in many industrial markets. So very high reliable, very high performance um, uh, embedded computing. So this thing now, you know, in a good way, in a good way, embedded computing has become what we wanted it to be. It's become pervasive, and in fact, it's almost become invisible. We had almost forgotten about it, uh, but now here we are, back at in this, um, you know, in this in this connected device world, and all of a sudden. We have to pay attention to it uh, again. So, the thing about the the embedded part of the stack is is that there are many options. So, you know, when we talked about the abilities, the you know how I do that now, there are many options. And while and what we have to think about the other uh, respect our tiers at a at a large scale, we have to think about the same thing in the embedded world. And so, um, you know, it's an area where 
where Eurotech uh, excels. Uh, we very, you know, have a lot of innovation around our abstraction layers, how we containerize. And again, it mirrors a little bit of what we've seen in the mobile in the mobile application space to be able to secure, containerize, and manage uh, applications and updates in a secure way, in a remote managed way, and in a way that really supports uh, a great deal of, of uh, edge computing, whether you need it or you use it all um, to do to do near time or real time processing and event triggers, or use it just to collect a lot of data. Uh, across various environments, you know the thing you will see, and it, you know if it's if it is a question you have about do I have to care what's inside the box? As some of the markets mature, we talked about you know at the very beginning, there will be some shrink wrap, purpose built devices. But where we are in the evolution of of this IoT technology, enabling technology is I, I do highly recommend you ask questions and understand you know what lives in the embedded space. Um, so one little example and a couple of things I'll, I'll wrap up with. Uh, we've been, uh, from Eurotech, we've been in many industries for a long time, but a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of industrial markets, energy markets, uh, transportation markets, you know, we have um, uh, really a very good success, many success stories in those markets. One that I, I like to talk about is, you know, is a major metropolitan uh, metro system where it's a rugged and industrial version of a gateway but that operates you know, on the rails. Uh, it collects data, uh, really that becomes, some of it becomes maintenance data, some of it becomes location data, some of the data is transmitted cellularly, some of it is transmitted in remote, uh, on wireless, uh, uh, in wireless hotspots that are you know, part of the network. And then other things happen as as um, and other connectivity occurs as as trains come in and out of stations. So you know it's really part of both a maintenance, a safety, um, and and somewhat obvious um, use cases. But the thing that's becoming interesting is that like like the converge of business models I referred to earlier is we're we're working with folks like this to start to look how they integrate that data with with other uh, applications, so um, you know where where is a rider uh, electronic fares? How do I get you know where do I routinely get on and off a train? What kind of couponing or local merchants? How do I pre uh, pay for a parking spot at a station? And so now this is you know we start to cross the boundaries of you know one one entity really operating the business case. And this being, uh, you know, service bureaus that are going to start to aggregate data and really sell pieces of the data and and monetize it, um, really with really other very small discrete things, but when combined, make a full business case. So, you know, one question I don't know if you can, if if you know, folks think about uh, this is, you know, are you ever ready? And you know, I like to think of the the carousel that never stops spinning and. And if you wait for it to stop, you won't be on it. And because it won't stop, and it's and it's definitely, you could look at it as spinning kind of uh, rapidly right now. But but just like any other large IoT project, uh, or or any other IT project, it's in one sense the principles are the same. You know, and we as technologists know how to do it and make good plans. We know how to use and think about agile development cycles, how to start small, uh, and how to build up. And you know our our view and advice is if you will get on the carousel, you will receive benefits. And if you get on it and respect the tiers, think about if you're building, you know, make a conscious decision. Do you want to do some feasibility and prototyping, really, or do you or do you have a solid case that you want to begin a path to production um, and make those kind of decisions? You can get on safely. There's enough technology. We're going to hear about security today, but uh, that can solve almost anything. And uh, and the better part of it is, it's it's we're at a, a really natural convergence cycle where the technology supports what what we need to do, and it supports it in an economical way. The the, the um, with the options that exist. So I'll leave you with just an interesting couple of thoughts. Is is you know, part of what we think about mostly on a day-to-day -day basis is 
are the, the business use cases, kind of the clear cut, stand on their own. Uh, but again, we're going to see these, these mashups and these service bureau kinds of models. And, you know, we think about business to business and, you know, what we as suppliers do and then, you know, the business to business to the consumer or the citizen kinds of applications. But here's what we know already. This, this already exists and is going to accelerate is we become not just a consumer and not just a producer. And even if we might think of strict enterprise applications, there are, um, we are going to, we, we exist organically in this system uh, as, a, as a provider of data based on where we are, what our behaviors are, what Facebook is going to do with our, our, our social habits, what Amazon is going to do with our, uh, with our purchasing habits, and um, you know, combined with the, the instrumentation of our world. So, um, you know, the, the thing to think about is as you look forward and even look at your life today and your life and your children's lives and your friends is where you might actually be and as, um, you know, as you even think about innovating yourself. Okay, so will, will IoT transform uh, the world as much as maybe dot-com or even as much as really the mobile revolution? You know, our position is you bet it will. It is, there is no doubt. We will instrument the world. We will add intelligence. And, and we will make good use out of it as both as businesses and, at, and, out of, and as society. Okay? So, uh, Alex, I'd like to go ahead and pause there and turn it back to you. Thank you. So much, Larry. That was a, a fantastic presentation. Um, and, you know, one of the things that uh, you mentioned was this cultural disruption that's happening across these different organizations. And we just think that uh, you're spot on there. Um, from what we've seen in our research, uh, you know, there is a lot of disruption. Um, you know, one, one question that did come in um, from the audience um, during your presentation was just from a high level, Larry, uh, you know, what do you think about the impact of IoT on developing countries or developing economies um, and, and kind of your take on that? Yeah. Yeah, Alex, thank you. So that is a good, that is a great question, actually. And, uh, you know, one thing, Eurotech, as a global company, we do get, uh, you know, we do sell and participate really around the globe. And, and the developing countries are, uh, you know, we see more activity uh, around them. And it's, uh, I will liken it to what we see with basic communication, the original killer app of technology, and that's voice, right, is in developing countries, uh, countries could not either afford or the or the theft of valuable copper in the ground really required the leap for communication to wireless. So this this place we're at with IoT and the, the miniaturization and the economic advances of what a sensor is and where it can be placed and even its value as long as it's secure if it's lost uh, is it's tremendous. So we're actually seeing some applications in Africa about water management about conservation uh, and purity uh, in some of the developing areas. So, um, you know, for us, no doubt, it's, we'll, we think it's big and, uh, and it will leap over traditional technology uh, plays that we might have thought of. Awesome. Awesome. That's very helpful, Larry. And uh, <laughs> thank you again for taking time this morning. Uh, fantastic presentation from your team and you from Eurotech. And, Again, uh, really appreciate you taking the time and uh, look forward to uh, catching up here in the future as we uh, hold more of these events. Yes, thank you all and thanks to everyone uh, who joined. I look forward to the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.